Hi, I'm Serena, founder of Trini Gome, one of the longest running Caribbean food blogs on the internet. And up to now, I've been sharing about me and about the site, but it's time to turn things around. I want to hear from you and I want to know what you want from a food blog. I want to find out why do you visit food blogs? What are you hoping to learn? What are you hoping to find? What kind of information are you looking for? Please leave your answers down below. I'm going to be looking at them. And until then, I'm going to be sharing a short chat that I had with one of my favorite chefs here in Trinidad. She's currently based at Aroma Culinary Studio and her food is out of this world. I've been so impressed by her over the last few years and her willingness to be open and to share with the public and with food enthusiasts about her knowledge. So let's see what she has to say and then I have a quick little cheat sheet I've prepared for y'all. That link is also down below. I've got a completely different version of this video over on my Serena Now channel. Go check it out. Aroma Canary Studio is the home of Cup of Joe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Question. How long have you been a chef? been a chef for, I don't want to give up my age, you know. Too late. <laughs> we passed 20 years. We passed 20 years. Awesome. When did you first realize your love of food and cooking? Uh, at an early age, because I grew up in a household where my mother loved to cook, my grandmother loved to, to cook. We had, my grandmother had a little roti shop. So, you know, we were always involved in that. So, I'll say, I wouldn't say from cradle, but at a very early age, maybe nine, ten or so. I went to Asia, I did my associate degree, and then I did the bachelor's degree. Um, along the way with that, I did a stint in a restaurant in New Jersey for a little while. And then I came back to Trinidad and I started at the Hilton and I stayed there for about six to seven years and from there I went to teach, I to teach because I decided you know it was time to give back you know all that they have given me and the experience that they have given me I decided I wanted to do that for the students there as well and when I was at Hilton there was somebody who was trying to encourage me to get on to the team I said no that's not the type of person I am and then uh, the team in, the, in 2011 did over their pastry, local leg of pastry competition. I said, well, okay, I'll do it. And I won, you know, pastry chef of the year for Trans Vigo to represent Trans Vigo on the international the team to go to Miami to compete. And we went. That year, 2011, we bought home, I think, was it the fourth or the fifth time coveted price of, you know, the, the price that everybody wants. Taste of the Caribbean for Trans Tobago. I entered again in 2012, I wasn't so lucky in 2012, and then I went back again in 2013, and I won again in 2013, again winning um, Pastry Chef of the Year for Trans Tobago, and my spot on the team as well. That year we did win a lot of goals, we also won um, a competition called Taste of the Island, and this is where you have to showcase what your cuisine is, and we got that coveted prize as well. How would you describe your culinary philosophy? My culinary philosophy, I love fusion. And I love taking it and trying to put it together with our local. So for instance, on our menu, we have something called a Dutch baby pancake. Now we know Dutch baby is a sweet pancake, is, you know, it's in international oven. in the oven. So I took it and I gave it a local spin where I made a shadow any pesto and put it on the Dutch baby with saltfish bull jar. Shut the front door. <laughs> Tomato choker and a cucumber and red onion um, chow on top of that. So these are the things that I, I, I like doing. I love, you know, doing those things. Seeing how far I can carry it. And bring it right back. And bring it right back. <laughs> 
all about continuing the relationship with the food. That the, con the relationship with the food doesn't stop when you turn off the plate. Exactly. You're continuing exactly. it from the pot the to the plate yeah. and the enjoyment. That's what I'm trying to bring across when I say presentation. Don't yeah. stop that. Okay, my pot done. We are. Alright, so let's take out all the food in a bowl and go and eat. You understand? No. Continue the relationship yeah. to the plate. <laughs> food becomes boring if you do it the same thing over and over and over again. So let's say for instance, you make a putter a, a, a lentil piece and you always normally just put in pumpkin and your seasonings and stuff inside of it. Throw a little carrot, throw a little something else inside of it. Make it, you know, a little more exciting because food is exciting. But first of all, they have to embrace it. They have to love their own. We have to come out of the too much of all the seasonings and believe that that is it and that's what flavors of you know our pot. My first one is we always when we cook in peas or we cook in meat we find it takes too long to cook because when it dries down we open it up water and we put cold water into the hot pot. What we are doing is we are shocking it and we are bring drawing or the it way back down so it starts to have to cook all over again my tip is keep a pot with hot water on your stove or keep your kettle with hot water boiling and every time you have to top water up into your pot you put that hot water in so that your food continues to cook and cooks faster it hastens the cooking proceed I don't like using too much a table salt because that type of salt is very salty. So it doesn't flavor the food. I like using either kosher salt or sea salt, which gives you the little type of saltiness that you want, but also flavors the food for you. So, what would you say to people who say that's sounding, that's sounding, that's sounding more expensive than if I just... It's not expensive. You can get a box of kosher salt for twenty something dollars, which will last you longer. Yes, and you, yes. yes. Kosher salt and you use years. more table salt than you would use do in those salt because you just need a little bit. And when you taste it by yourself, you will see why you only need a little bit. It's not salty, but it brings flavor. So where do you get your kosher salt? So I get my kosher salt. There is a meat place on in Pitti Valley. Um, and Alice Glen meat and things and that's where you can get that box for 20 something dollars I get it there from them um, or you can check West Bees everybody knows West Bees they up in the east now too yeah I'm, I'm a bees acolyte I'm a bees acolyte you can get anything there so you can check them try it and tell me what you think after